Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm very happy today because I'm launching for the first time ever my Wing Chun by Design podcast. It's the first type of video with this setup and uh, I'm really happy and excited for this next chapter because many times when I post a video on YouTube, Facebook or Instagram, I usually get questions from friends and fans from different parts of the world and I think this is a great format for me to answer these questions and uh, and then hopefully that will encourage you to ask more questions and that way we can interact and uh, make it a, a fun type of uh, episode and video. Today the idea is for me in future videos to have um, special guests join me uh, in the panel and that way we can have great conversations regarding you know kung fu wing chun training uh, tips and strategies injury prevention uh, you name it and then hopefully we can have some celebrities on the show as well so for today since it's the first one i want to keep it short and sweet and uh, let's jump straight into it so many times i get asked what is applied Wing Chun? I've answered this in the past, like long time ago in another video, but I think it would be appropriate for me to address it again today. Now, applied Wing Chun is just basically Yip Man Wing Chun. So my Sifu, Mr. Duncan Leung, he is an early Yip Man disciple, okay, from the 50s. And uh, my Sifu is a formal disciple and he did most of his training with Yip Man uh, with private tuition. So everything my Sifu teaches is based on what he learned from Yip Man. It's his interpretation of the Yip Man Wing Chun system, right? With all its training methodologies, the theory, the principles, etc. The way he teaches and the way I learned and the way I teach my students is with a huge emphasis on the practicality of Wing Chun and basically building the students confident with their fighting ability because for us Wing Chun is a martial art it's a fighting system it's meant for you to learn how to fight so you can defend yourself it's a self-defense based martial art other other practitioners may um, have a different approach to Wing Chun but this is how we interpret Wing Chun and this is how we practice so Applied Wing Chun is Yip Man Wing Chun. Anytime you see one of our videos online, uh, maybe you would get a bit confused if you don't know what you're seeing. Every time I have, let's say, a student of mine or even myself work on a fighting drill in one of our videos, you'll see that the person attacking is usually using any other form of uh, martial art or, or fighting skill. So that's why when you see high kicks, jab, crosses, uppercuts, hooks, and you name it, of course, they're not doing Wing Chun. They're doing any other form of martial art because we believe that the best way to have the student develop their confidence with their fighting ability uh, in knowing they can use their Wing Chun to defend themselves is to use it against other forms of martial arts. Now, I know many, many other Wing Chun instructors out there will teach their students to develop their skills Wing Chun versus Wing Chun. Let's say a student is punching with a Yachi Chung Choi and the other student is defending with a Bong Sao. Techniques like that can only work at the academy where it's you know, a sequence in a controlled environment where the person attacking is not fully committing, right? If you were to try a bong sao against someone coming at you with a jab or a cross, it will never work. Now, why? Because just the elbow position of the person attacking. If I'm attacking you with the elbow down and the other person is stopping me with a bong sao, sure, you might have a chance because the elbow is down. You can jam that arm. But the moment the elbow is out and the person attacking is coming in with the elbow a little bit higher, how are you going to stop and jam that arm if your bong sao is underneath the punch? So that's why some people will modify the bong sao and raise it, right? So that way they can kind of, sorry, that way they can kind of stop the punch with a high bong sao to compensate. But that's not a very effective way to stop a punch in my opinion. Okay, so 
what is applied Wing Chun? It's Ip Man Wing Chun. It's my Sifu's interpretation. And uh, that's how we practice, train, and teach. So recently I received a, a question uh, on Instagram. And it is, and it says, why do traditional Kung Fu styles usually fail in combat sports? That's pretty simple because they don't spar. All right, that's just like a basic answer to a complex question because, see, I've, I've been to China so many times. I've stayed there for long periods of time. So you could say, you could say at some point I lived there. Um, when someone is training a traditional Kung Fu system in China and the, the, the culture in China is where Sifu says, student does. Nothing wrong with that. Not that you should question your sifu, but you should question, or at, excuse me, you should ask questions. Why should I be practicing this? Or um, is the application for that movement that? So if your emphasis is purely uh, performance, doing forms, most of your uh, training time, then of course you're going to excel at that. But if you spend this much time doing forms and this much time on the practicality, applications and sparring, then, you know, you won't do very well uh, yeah. in a combat sports arena. However, if you emphasize, you know, practicality, uh, you spend this much time on forms and this much time on applications and fighting drills and sparring, then, of course, you're going to do much better. Now, when you spar, when you work on a specific uh, fighting drill, you have to test your skills with proper timing, proper distance, proper speed, power, everything, okay? Because even when I teach my children's class, I teach them to use the proper timing and speed because when someone's coming at you and they really want to hurt you, they're going to come at you with full speed, full power, and if you're not ready for it, you're going to panic, you're going to fail, you're going to get into like emergency panic mode. I use this example with my children's class. I say to them, let's say you don't know how to swim and someone at a party grabs you and throws you in the deep end of the pool. What will happen? What do you think you will do? So most people, if they don't know how to swim, they will panic. They will just try and survive because they don't want to drown. Same thing happens in a sparring environment, in a combat environment. If you don't know how to fight, how to spar, you're going to collapse, you're going to panic, you're going to hyperventilate, and literally you're going to start swimming for dear life. However, if you do know how to swim, and you're at a party, someone throws you in the deep end of the pool, and it's a warm, hot day, what are you going to do? You're going to enjoy yourself, you're going to have fun, because you know how to swim, you can float, easy, done. With sparring, with uh, pressure testing, same thing. If you know what you're doing, you have someone come at you with you know, full speed punch to your face, you know what to do. You don't need to panic. That's where confidence kicks in and that's where your training habits kick in. So in my opinion, if you want to do well, now I'm not just talking about Wing Chun, I'm talking about any system. Any martial art, karate, taekwondo, kickboxing, judo, jiu-jitsu, whatever. You pressure test it, you get comfortable with that environment, someone feeds you an attack, you know what to do, you know how to handle yourself, you know at least how to keep a safe distance. That's the step in the right direction, in my opinion. Okay, let's go to the next one. Chi Sao versus sparring, what should you do the most? Now, both elements in my school are very important because Chi Sao gives you the, the fundamentals. It's the heart and soul of the Wing Chun system. So you, you need to do Chi Sao. But don't get into the idea of thinking that by doing Chi Sao, you're going to become a good fighter because that's not the case. Okay, I've actually seen people do some Chi Sao before they jump in the boxing ring like as if that's a warm-up for what's going to happen in the ring. And then they meet a comple completely different reality. 
So is qi so important? Yes. It's a sensitivity drill. It's very important. It teaches you how to, um, how to cover the areas where you're exposed, how to be one or two steps ahead of your opponent and your training partner. So definitely it helps you with your horse to feel that pressure come at you and uh, learn to deal with it. Also, quick tip, when you're doing qi sao, it's not about ego. Anytime I see you know, qi sao online, most of the times it's all about ego. Let's see how many times I can slap the other guy without him touching me. Really, if you're doing qi sao this far away from someone, how hard is it to hit the other person in the face? It's not hard at all. Same with the other person hitting you. So it's not about ego. It's about learning the fundamentals. You don't even need to do it fast to be good and effective at it. Now with sparring, sparring has a very important place in martial arts training. Okay, I have my students spar every week. Now why is it important? As I said in the previous, answering the previous question, it teaches you timing, distance, pressure test, see what's working for you, what's not working for you. And that will kind of guide your training towards what it is that you should improve on. And it helps you build confidence. Okay, next question. Wing Chun versus Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I just got that uh, question two days ago on Instagram. Now, both martial arts are very effective if you know how to train them correctly. So, even the evolution of uh, jiu-jitsu, in my opinion, I'm not a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. I love the system. I love all martial arts and I respect them all. I respect any serious martial artist. I respect anyone who takes their martial arts system seriously and pours sweat, tears and blood into perfecting that martial art. So whether it's Wing Chun, Karate, jiu-jitsu, I respect them all. Now, you need to know how to stop the attack that you're going to be dealing with, okay? So if you're just working on defending against, you know, punches to the face, someone shoots for your legs, you're going to have a hard time. You have someone working on just trying to, you know, circle around tangling your legs while you're standing and your hands are free, may you know they're going to have a hard time doing that so i've seen the evolution of brazilian jiu-jitsu get very much into uh, like competition type of uh, jiu-jitsu where it's very different from the call it the original jiu-jitsu that i witnessed from you know the gracie family or the machado family you know 20 years ago uh, there is some evolution that's why right now you know the gracies are trying to push their self-defense programs into their academies because of this evolution now nothing wrong with doing sports uh, jiu-jitsu but in terms of self-defense you know there are um, other approaches to certain techniques now when it comes to wing chun it depends on the wing chun practitioner of course and the wing chun call it lineage because I've seen many Wing Chun schools where they just focus the entire time on, say, 90% of their training is just Qi Sao, right? So they're going to have a hard time with Jiu Jitsu, with Thai boxing, with karate, or with anyone. So it really depends on how you train your Wing Chun techniques to be effective against a Jiu Jitsu practitioner or any other form of martial arts. So you need to know what you're going to be dealing with and train to counter that. So, okay, that's pretty much it for today. I didn't want to go too long with today's video. I hope you, um, you know, enjoy the video so far. If you agree with me, you know, let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. If you don't agree with me, post it down below. Let's have a conversation because, again, I'm not saying I possess the absolute truth. This is just my um, opinion and my way of thinking when it comes to Wing Chun. And I give credit to my Sifu, of course, because what I teach, I learned it from him. And that's it. So guys, if you haven't already, please check out my online academy, my online university at umauniversity.com.au. I have a free introductory applied Wing Chun course there. It's got lots of uh, different tips and strategies, videos, and I show you how to do the Silim Tao form according to the way I do it. 
from different angles. You can check out my free ebook as well. And uh, if you want to, you know, jump online and train with me on a monthly basis and learn all about my members exclusive uh, video tutorials, you can also check out my online Applied Wing Chun Academy. It's on that same website. So guys, thanks very much for watching. First episode of this Wing Chun by Design podcast is done. So I hope you enjoyed it. Guys, I look forward to seeing you on our next video. Have a good one. Bye.